Hi all, everything in my video is pulled from the public domain and I am using them under the Fair Use Fair Dealings Guidelines. Everything I say is my own opinion. You should look into this information for yourselves, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Good morning, everybody. Okay, we are starting off with a word from our sponsor. You guys know I have a sponsor, so this is really super important, so listen to this. Let's talk about some online security, shall we? You guys all know who follow my channel that I was doxxed online. You know that my name, age, profession, location, and even my special needs son autism diagnosis was put out on the web. We know who did that, but it could have been prevented. So simple, just by using a VPN. And the VPN provider that I use is Atlas VPN. So what is a VPN? Well, that's simple. It's an encrypted tunnel that nobody can see into, including hackers, the government, and even your internet service provider. This makes sure that your online activity remains private and secure and free from outside interference. Atlas shields your identity from websites, apps, and services that want to track you. While some companies limit the amount of devices you can use, Atlas VPN allows you to use it on unlimited devices. It's also good for streaming. Let's say you're on Netflix in the United States, but there's a show that you really want to watch that's on Netflix in Europe. Just go onto your VPN, change your location, and you can watch TV in other areas that normally wouldn't be available to you. Well, right now, Atlas is offering a special summer deal. It's $1.83 a month with three months extra for free. So you can protect your privacy and get many benefits of the Atlas VPN for this ridiculously low price. And they're going to give you a 30-day money-back guarantee. And you can get this deal by clicking the link in the video description below. But be fast. It's a limited time offer. So don't wait, you guys. Click the link and get secure with Atlas VPN. All right, you guys, that is very important. Now, once again, we have lots of information. We always have lots of information. Uh, also, at the end, we have some footage of Finn. You're not going to believe this one. Uh, so make sure you stay all the way to the end because you're definitely going to want to see that. So let's just jump in and get there, shall we? Let's go. All right, we're starting off with Sophie. Now, I told you that she was at the Shakespeare reception at the palace with the Duke and Duchess of Gloucester and King Charles and Queen Camilla. But this blew up a little bit because of this absolutely gorgeous blue dress that she's wearing. Um, I believe it was 1,350 pounds, if I remember correctly, or 1,035 pounds. There you go. It's an etro um, dress, gold and blue. And again, a big thank you to Remy Lod Sauce for the information on what she was wearing. Love it. All right, moving on. For those of you who are unaware, Sophie is the Colonel in Chief of the Corps of Royal Electrical and Mechanical Engineers. And she went and saw the technical training that the soldiers get as they prepare for operations while she was visiting Aldershot. I love her in red. As usual, a big thank you to Remulad Sauce once again for putting up all of the information of what Sophie was wearing. Next up, Sophie was seen at the Driftfield Agricultural Society show. Pretty obvious she was having a really, really good time looking at all of the livestock and the pigs as they went by. Look at her face. She's just enjoying this way too much. <laughs> We know that Sophie has a lot of patronages and she's very passionate about food production and farmers and growers and how they contribute to, you know, the nation's livelihood. And she's connecting the next generation with the countryside and advocating for greater opportunities for young people. I love it. She is a total natural with this thing, and I've said it before and I'll say it again. It's just like Princess Anne said. You take the patronages, patronages that are good with you, you love them, and you jump in. She even saw students to help showcase the produce that they had grown. Love it. So as she continued her walk around talking with other students and meeting other animals from cows to here's somebody's dog, you know, oh my gosh, we all know how much she loves dogs, right? Right? 
like yeah but notice that she's mingling mostly with the young people because these are the people she's trying to get involved in farming now at some point she was being shown sheep and she goes that's not a sheep it's a donkey in disguise now, I'm not sure what was happening here. She was doing something funky with a feather on her face. Obviously, she's having a good time. You can see the feather behind her head as she's laughing. Then they gave her something to drink. I think she might have been drinking some of that before the feather attempt. Whew. All right, moving on. We have Edward, the Duke of Edinburgh. And I told you yesterday that the University in Bath uh, had Edward there. And while he was there, he gave an honorary degree to NASA astronaut and alumni Anne McLean. Well, today, Edward went to the Bath Royal and Literary Scientific Institution. He was greeted by the Vice Lord Lieutenant of Somerset. Looking good there, Edward. Looking good. All right, next up, interesting, we have Peter Phillips. He was on the grounds at Catcomb Park. Um, which is near Princess Anne's home in Gloucestershire, Gloucestershire, ugh, ahead of hosting the Festival of British Eventing. And so he was, you know, taking pictures, leaning against a fence, leaning with his dog, and, you know. So Anne and Zara both love the horses, and so those grounds are home to Festival of British Eventing. They have the Magic Millions event, which takes place between the 4th and 6th of August, and there's some horses going there. There's a grade two listed house, which is where Prince Anne and her husband live, and um, Zara and Mike used to live in one of the homes on the estate with their children and peter lives there with his children who he co-parents you know with his ex-wife moving on to princess anne she was at the national coast coast watch institute she did a station tour she met volunteers and members of the community and then she went to a reception and yes as is usual her husband tim lawrence went with her which i think is very nice now, sticking with Anne, Intelligence Corps Day was on Saturday the 15th, and they have their annual celebration. And so Anne went to Quicksands because she is their colonel-in-chief. I did not know that. You know, people are talking about Anne. She went to Kent for the Remembrance Trust, which she has been patron of since 2021. But they were in Kent for the day, and they underwent numerous, you know, I've shown you, they, numerous engagements in Kent. And they're saying that um, Princess Anne is that you just can't fake that kind of fascination. She's fun. You can talk to her like she's just a normal person. And um, he said he had a talk with her about how he was experimenting with a novel approach to managing cemetery land. She was all into it, uh, you know, into the discussion that she's just a normal down to earth person. Well, we already knew that. I'm moving on to King Charles. He is now on the passports for the UK, for the British passport. Um, they're starting this week. This is the first time in 70 years that the name change has occurred because, you know, up until now, the Queen has been on all of the passports. So um, they said a lot of people don't remember ever having a passport without her on it. So this is a new era in history, and uh, I think it's uh, lovely. And also, uh, after 30 years of the British passport being burgundy, they're now blue. Cool. Moving on. All right, here we go. On to Prince William. Remember, he and Catherine were in Boston for the Earthshot Prize. He is returning here in September of this year for the Earthshot Prize Annual Innovation Summit. He will be arriving Monday, September 18th, and he'll be here Tuesday, September 19th, because the, the um, summit takes place on the 19th. He was going to come last year for the same thing, but then, of course, the Queen passed away, so instead he delivered a um, video message. Let's not forget that the actual awards this year are taking place in Singapore in November, which, of course, almost immediately, Harry put out a thing. He's going to be playing polo in Singapore in November. It, another attention-grabbing stunt that's almost a joke. Anyway, I am very happy that he's returning to the United States. We welcome you with open arms. Go, William! Moving on. 
All right, moving on to Harry and Meghan. As I reported to you yesterday, numerous, numerous news outlets are saying that Harry and Meghan are taking a break, time apart. They're separating, guys, is what it comes down to. Uh, they're saying that Harry doesn't fit in Meghan's tacky Tinseltown world, and he's hoping to find himself. But supposedly an insider close to the couple says that that's just not true. Uh-huh. However, Harry will be going to Africa solo for the Netflix docuseries where he was supposed to be going, I might add, before the strike. Uh, but then it came out he didn't want to go without Megan. They're saying that stress with their emotional issues, their monetary issues, has made life with them a living hell. And so by separating onto different continents, they're hoping that they'll be able to move on. In the meantime, it is being said in this article, sure enough, they sold their mansion in Montecito and Harry is living in another place. Gee, like we didn't know that. Uh, he's staying somewhere else. And of course, other YouTuber people have already shown you that that house was sold. Uh-huh. Now remember, this whole thing kicked off because Radar Online reported on Tuesday that they were taking time apart. But again, a Sussex insider hit back that any speculation of a breakup is untrue that it's made up. However, several people have reached out to Harry and Meghan for a comment on the matter and they won't make a comment on it. And let's be honest, when was the last time we saw them together other than the fake car chase or that fake video, that one fake video they put out? In months, you never see them together. Now in the middle of this, Omid Scobie has rushed to defend them. Now remember, remember, Omid got caught lying in court, Megan got caught lying in court, and when Harry was asked during his court case in the UK, did he know Omid Scobie, his response was he knew of him, but he did not know him. And of course, we know now that that's completely untrue. So if Omid doesn't have a direct line to them and he's not in communication, how would he know that this information is untrue? So he's putting out these tweets going, this is the kind of stuff that Radar Online puts out. These are the kinds of things that you shouldn't be paying any attention to them because they're not true. I think we all know that Harry and Meghan know Omid. They, we've already shown on previous videos, they have socialized with them, they've had drinks together, because now it's come out that in Omid's new book, he's going to give the name of the alleged royal racist in his book. Where would he get that information from if it wasn't from Harry and Meghan? Now, I agree with Mystified here, and you can stop my screen and read this, but apparently Jack Royston has put out four articles about Meghan in the last 24 hours, and they're saying that three of the articles were written to bury the first one, which is the only one, which is the only one he wrote to try to prove that he's not a Sussex Squad member, which I think at this point we all know he is. I mean, if you guys really go back and look at all of the stuff that he writes, it's like he's taken up Omid Scobie's mantle and he's become Harry and Meghan's personal propaganda person with his articles. Like, seriously. All right, here's the big one. Now, we know that Harry and Meghan have been trying to gain access to political figures in the United States. We know she wrote letters. She made cold calls. How she got their numbers, I don't know. Apparently... After the Queen's funeral, Harry and Meghan asked Jill Biden to get on Air Force One for a ride home. And the request was denied by the White House because they didn't want to upset the palace and they didn't want to create a commotion. And then you come to find out that months earlier, Jill Biden was invited to attend the Invictus Games, but apparently they nixed that idea because they thought the royal family would be upset by her attendance at, at the Invictus Games after the way Harry and Meghan treated the royal family. Yes. Oh, my goodness. You guys, I'm telling you. Can you guys imagine the amount of PR that they would have gotten out of that if they got off the plane, if they got off Air Force One and they're just happened to be cameras there to catch them stepping off the plane with the Bidens. You guys know how much she's, we've talked about the political thing. She wants to go into politics. Could you imagine 
if she had ridden on that plane. But I have to tell you, that also makes me think that they were having financial problems even back then. Why not take your commercial flight home? Or actually, if I'm not mistaken, they did a private jet. If you're not having financial issues, you don't need Air Force One. But just knowing that they even asked just shocks me to no end. All right, moving on. All right, I just wanted to touch on this article because as usual, the if anybody from the royal family has a birthday, Harry and Meghan say nothing, do nothing. They don't put anything on their company's website. They don't send out tweet, nothing. But let me tell you, if they have a birthday and somebody in the royal family doesn't acknowledge it, it's Armageddon. Uh-huh. All right. Moving on, they're saying that Harry or Meghan are facing living hell due to the pressure that they're under. Okay, now I want you guys to consider this. If they had come to the United States, if they had never said one bad word about the royal family, if they had kept their heads down, and if they had hooked up with true charities and had done some charitable work instead of building their whole brand on whining and crying about the royal family and here's my thought on that while harry was unhappy and wanted to leave i think megan was the one who said i see a way to make us bigger i see a way to i think the whole thing was her yes he's an ass but i think it was her sorry now they're saying that Meghan had ambitions to marry prince harry and she planned things out do i believe that Yes. Now, she said she really didn't understand the royal family. Is that possible? Yeah, it's possible. But who do you have to blame for that? Not William. It's not William's job to train her for the royal family. That was Harry's job. So if she was woefully unprepared, she should be looking at Harry instead of whining about how the queen didn't prepare her. Now, next up, and I found this interesting, they're saying that Harry called William to offer a truce, but didn't tell Meghan first. I don't think Harry called William to offer a truce. I think Harry did call William to say, our marriage is breaking up. I, I might have made a mistake. I don't know what to do next. Will the family take him back? Well, that's a whole nother mess of wax. You know, these articles are coming out. You know, she's... Megan's not making an attempt to be anonymous. Harry does it, but she doesn't. Excuse me, I don't think so. She's one of the ones hiding those kids away. And I said it before and I'll say it again. You see her at a shopping trip and she's carrying orchids and she's trying honey. You don't see her pushing a cart through the you know grocery store with baked beans and fish fingers in it you know what i mean she's these are still total set up pop shots they are she saw the camera she acknowledged it with a smile that's what she does that's who she is and if she did not out for any great length of time then she calls the paps and she says i'm gonna be out with the dog come and take a picture I'm telling you, you think these people are just there by accident? No, in the meantime, these articles are coming out where she's taking advantage of the simple pleasures of the upscale neighborhood and mingling with other residents. No, I don't think she's mingling with the other residents because the other residents have already said they're very unhappy with them. And no, they have not been accepted into the neighborhood. Uh-huh. All right, you guys, let's go on to Finn. Now, we're trying to figure out ways to exercise him. It is hot here. I mean, we're talking like over 100 during the day. So when the sun started to go down, my, my son who's home from college says to me, Mom, take him out into the middle of the backyard. I'm going to fly my drone because he Finn tends to chase the drone and try to catch it. So this went on for a minute. I've added some music to it. So you see me standing there, and then you see Finn. Oh, my God, it's hilarious. Watch this.
right, you guys, you know what I want. Put those comments down, make them good because I'm reading them. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that bell. And if you've already hit that button, double check and make sure you're still subscribed. Don't forget to go into the link where you'll find the description box, where you'll find the links to my Twitter, my Getter, my Rumble, my email, and my physical address. For those of you who've donated through the coffee fund or through my thanks button, thank you so much. And as always, you guys, have a great day.